If uh, we are interested in uh, more general tips for tuning PI regulators, here are a couple of slides available. So there exist uh, many different methods for the proper tuning. Let's start with the manual one. This uh, requires a step change in the required quantity, let it be speed, load or the current, and measurement of the regulated quantity response. So on this picture is an example of the change of the required speed as a step from 2000 RPM to 4000 RPM and the response is uh, the real speed over time in the violet color. You can see oscillations, you can see overshoot. So we saw a damped oscillation response, which is usually unwanted behavior. So we have some rules of thumb that can be applied. Well, if there is an overshoot, we have to change the ratio Kp divided by Ki to avoid it. If the shape is exponentially uh, nearing to the required value, we can keep the Kp-Ki ratio, but we proportionally change both Kp and, and Ki to decrease or increase the slope. And uh, one recommendation, we shall try this at different speeds and loads and choose conservative values for the Kp and Ki to avoid uh, undamped oscillations at any part of the load curve. Okay, the tuning of the speed can be uh, simplified by using the plotter window in the monitor mode. Otherwise, we can use the ducts and the oscilloscope. The optimum reaction of uh, the speed tuning is when the overshoot is not exhibited at all and uh, the target speed is closing to the required one uh, very quickly without unnecessary delay. Further, when we look at the speed regulation over the different speed and load changes, we can see that uh, the coefficients for the proper uh, PI tuning at different speeds uh, can be can differ, which means that for proper tuning, we need to change these coefficients over time, typically depending on the speed that we get as a feedback from our motor system. In such case, uh, we shall measure the Kp and Ki parameters uh, at different speeds and make an interpolation between these measurements. This needs to be implemented by user, but uh, it's very easy to achieve. So now let's look at the uh, tuning of the PI regulator a little bit uh, more uh, analytically. Let's uh, create the speed step and let's measure the speed response. So we need to determine the stabilized speed at uh, infinity time called Y on a torque step u. We have to determine the process dead time lambda that uh, tells us uh, what is the reaction delay of the whole system. Then we have to determine the time constant tau when speed crosses the threshold of the 63% of the speed step. This threshold is measured between the initial stabilized value and the final stabilized value. And uh, finally, we need to know the PI process frequency, uh, FS, that's uh, set in the motor control workbench and it's typically 2 kHz. Now, we will assume that the motor with the load works as a first order system with a simple exponential response and uh, in the case of uh, previously measured values, we can calculate the process gain as a delta 
speed divided by delta torque and uh, you can see that the values have the digits of uh, digits per PWM and the change in the compare register of the motor control timer. Further, we can consider the PI regulator of a depicted form. Then, uh, putting the calculated values into these uh, uh, terms for different types of regulators in uh, our motor control workbench we use the PI regulator, we can calculate the KP, uh, tau I and tau D parameters according to the uh, central line. The, this set of coefficients comes from the method of Ziegler-Nichols and it's a little bit aggressive and generates overshoots. If we want a more conservative or moderate uh, reaction and tuning of the PI regulators, we can use a different calculation of the, these coefficients based on the Cohen-Kuhn method. And uh, when we get the coefficients, we can calculate the Kp, Ki and possibly Kd if we use the PID regulators uh, with the equations on this page. These uh, values shall be expressed as a ratio k divided by 2 power n and put in the motor control workbench where the value of the kx parameter is in the 16-bit range. Finally, when calculating the pi coefficients, we still need to tune the system to the uh, final point. The equations on the previous slides are valid in the range of the lambda divided by t 0 0.1 to 1, otherwise we need to use the other types of the tuning. The next method that uh, we can use for tuning the Kp and Ki works in a time domain with an a priori knowledge of the motor and load inertia and mechanical resistance. These are equivalent uh, of the electrical inductance and electrical re resistance and uh, by substitution of these uh, ratios in the uh, control loop we can calculate the Kp and Ki like on this slide. If uh, our system exhibits a second order or more complex or even interlinked system with combined exponential behaviors, the measurement of the responses and calculation is too complex and uh, it's discussed in the control theory literature. For example, a zero pole mapping regulators. Such example uh, will use a PI regulator with a derivative component or more complex polynomial regulators. It's beneficial if uh, we use a small filter with a tau equal of 10% of the main tau, time constant, for the error component uh, to be introduced before the PI regulator. If you are interested uh, in uh, some literature where you can learn more about tuning the PI regulators, we have attached some links to the different literature that can give you better understanding and more precise equations. We can as well use uh, tools like uh, MATLAB and the Bericha workbench for the tuning.